How are you, friends? Oh, it's Halloween weekend, and we got a long day ahead of us. And I wanted to take along the Google Pixel 8 Pro and see how it performs over the span of everything we gotta do today. Uh, probably gonna do some gaming, probably going to play around with the settings a bit, obviously use the cameras, uh, see how the battery life is, and yeah, all that sort of stuff. But we gotta start by getting ready, so please hold. So morning routine finished and Samika's out at Powerlift Studios on Newberry to get her lift on. However, I'm going to wait her out by playing a little bit of video games. I figure this is a good test. I want to get an hour of gaming in. I usually use Mech Arena for this. Again, not sponsored, but I do like using this game because one, it's not free to play. You can actually use your skill to actually progress, which I like. But also the fact that it has online play. It has a lot of battery usage because, you know, it's just a lot of screen time. It's a lot of like matchmaking. It's a lot of like syncing with the internet to make sure you're playing. So it ends up zapping your battery very quickly. So I feel like this is a good stress test on the battery. So let's get to gaming and see how this pans out. So some weeks back from our workout, so I gotta stop gaming. However, I got to about 20%. So I was starting my day at nine and then now it's 11 right now. So I did like an hour of like social media and obviously videos. Uh, so just some Instagram and camera battery life. And then obviously an hour of gaming. The camera actually took a lot more battery than it did for the gaming. However, I'm about 20%. So 80% for the rest of the day. That should get me through. But the thing that I will say is that a lot of that gaming session that I did is the tutorial because obviously I, my, I switched phones. I need to change to my other accounts or switch my other account to my new phone. But because of how Mech Arena is, you have to freaking go through like two or three battles and like do all the tutorials before you can actually sign in and get all your stuff back. So some of that footage I gave you is because it was the tutorial, which was lame. But I did add some of the actual matchmaking in there. So half of it was tutorial, half of it was actual gameplay, just for your sake of knowledge. But yeah, they are also infamous for that because <laughs> when you start, start the game initially, they will just pound you with promotions. I wish they could just like throw that into a separate screen, you could see it. But God, getting started out of that game is annoying. Great game, again, it is you know, free to play and generally you don't have to pay any money to actually compete over time. Uh, I've been having fun just doing it for free. Just something to say there. But anyway, we are gonna, we have so many freaking chores to do because we're, we're gonna go to Puerto Rico in like a few days. So we gotta pack her stuff, I'm already packed. We also gotta get ready for a Seahawks game and then also figure out Halloween later tonight, which is gonna be a long night for us on a Sunday because we're degenerates. But anyway, let's go to it. I'm packing going. <laughs> so we are still in the process obviously the house is a little bit in shams because we need to get together all of our gear for this wedding however since we are going to be here for a bit let's talk a little bit about protection form and function with the pixel 8 pro so i know a lot of you guys don't like protection but for me i generally add that because I shattered my Pixel 6 uh, like right out the gate, so I kind of got scarred from that. Now I do that. However, I know some of you guys like to go a little bit more bare bones, so let's start with that. So bare Pixel, obviously very nice. What was funny is I read an article where they were like, oh, do we miss the curved screen from the 6 and 7? And I'm like, no, I absolutely don't. The actual rails are nice because you can hold it. It's just a lot more ergonomical. You can hold this securely. The other one felt like I was holding a blade. And it was just not very comfortable and it ended up falling, especially when I put like that face down on like a couch or something, it would just slide off because of that. With this, it's not as slidey. 
It's a lot more secure. So yeah, don't go back to that design aesthetic. Keep with this stupid article. Don't try to re-influence us to go backwards. Anyway, outside of that, um, even if you don't want any protection, I would suggest getting a screen protector. And that's because I got a like I got a screen protector for this, but before that, I was probably like two days bare, and I was being super careful with it. And all I was really doing is pocketing it to go out and to do like errands and things like that. But I did get a like a hairline scratch on the very bottom here. I'll try to show you guys on a picture, but it's very slight, but it's just, I don't know how it got there because my wallet's leather has no metal portions on it. My keys are covered by uh, a leather cover by Bellroy. And I just don't put my phone, other things inside the same pocket as my phone. So it's like, did my pockets scratch it? Which is wild. So maybe the screen is a little bit fragile here. So get a screen protector of a, like a tempered glass protector to really protect your phone because you don't want scratches and all that sort of stuff. The other thing that you can protect is the camera. And, you know, initially I was putting something on there because, I, again, in my initial uh, impressions, I said that it looked cleaner back in the 6 where it was just all one big visor. So I did get a cover to protect the cameras, but also make that visor all blocked out. And that's not, not just aesthetics because, well, it is aesthetics, but I didn't just care about the black aesthetics it's because this metallic portion gets scratched super easy. Like if you looked at the, the sevens, everyone's <laughs> visor looked like trash. It was gross. So I did that to try to protect it, but I did start noticing that it had impacts on the performance of the camera. So what it would do is one, it would just think it's dirty all the time. Even if this screen protector was clean, it would still like say like, oh, there's dirt here. You should probably clean it. The other thing it was doing, it was, it was getting confused with the macro focus. So like when it would open up the camera app, it would like switch between cameras really quickly and really, it was just super strange because it was getting confused by just some reflections or whatever this was doing. So if you want protection, I would just say like, it's not worth it because it's gonna affect the camera performance. So just get a screen protector. If it comes with this sort of stuff, just like gimmicky, you'll end up throwing it away anyway. So screen protector only. Um, the other thing to note here is that obviously it has MagSafe or like MagSafe-like features where you can do wireless charging, except this magnet is super weak. Like I can put a, a Snap Grip Pro or whatever, I don't know, this skinny pop socket on here, but it's just, it falls off immediately, like even when I'm trying to put it on. So it's not the strongest magnet. So that's where I, I, I'm more encouraged to put it in a case. I mean, obviously. I have PTSD anyway, but getting a case with a stronger magnet will give you better performance. So like here, easy to put on, I can finagle with it, I can miss, I can shake it around and it's strong. And that's really good too, because that'd be good for your accessories and anything else that you want to use the magnets for. So I'm still waiting on mine from dbrand and Moment so that I can have like access to like just a clear case as well as usage of my mini mobile lenses that I have yet to do a review on, but I will do that now when I, once I get them. Um, but yeah, having a case is nice. Obviously, it gives you some options with accessories. Um, and yeah, just extra protection. So those are things to note here. Obviously, we have a little bit more packing to do with Samika. I figure I can try to kill a little bit more battery here through editing because I'm behind on posting pictures from different weddings we were at. So let's get to editing and see how much more this will drain in the next hour or so. All right, so editing was actually pretty good. There was no sort of lag or crashing of the applications. I did edit on both the native Google app as well as Lightroom. I found that Lightroom is obviously a little bit better in terms of your flexibility, like really locking in your vignettes and being a little bit more elaborative in your color grading is significantly better and more refined on Lightroom. However, there are some features in Google that, you know, you can do some pretty basic edits and get it done really quickly. I will say that it's a little bit more exaggerated and less nuanced on the Google front. However, they have all those other tools like shifting where people are, removal, which is a big one. Removal tool is much better on and just see more seamless on the Google front than it is on the Adobe Lightroom front. So that's where I kind of like to remove people, to do all that sort of stuff. I de tend to use Google a little bit more. However, like sometimes when Google takes people out or tries to take out like a poll, which I was having issues with, um, where Adobe Lightroom can't really do that without like mimicking or, or copying another part of the picture. And sometimes you get weird like bumps or like people's heads get into where they're trying to fix. Google doesn't have that, but then it has a little bit of smudging 
feature on it. So then when it does smudge, you can kind of still see that there was something removed. That's when I actually take it back into Lightroom and then use the healing tool to sort of smooth that eye out. So it just a little, looks a little bit nicer and it doesn't get all tripped up. So I end up using both, but I'm predominantly in Lightroom just to get the colors and all that correct. And then to like remove people, I use Google. The other thing that's the benefit of Lightroom over the Google suite there is that it just, it, you can turn your phone and actually edit in landscape mode, which is just nice just because you can see the pictures, the controls are on the side. It's just, I like it personally better because I can see the picture a little bit bigger and I can have the controls on one side, but that's all to preference. But overall, there was no major lag in terms of the actual performance. It did knock down my battery significantly, so I think I'm around 50%, just about to be 49%, uh, but I still should have significant amount of time to, you know, go through the rest of my day. I might get stopped out at eight, so we are gonna go to a Seahawks bar and I'm going to bring a, a wireless charger just in case, but for now we are at 50% and let's see how long that will last us. Right now it is three o'clock, we're heading to a bar to make it to the game at four. So see you guys over there. For coming to the bar, most of what I could do is test out camera, so I decided to check out some low light settings, zoom, and some camera features. I didn't do any of the sort of voice augmentation sections as I want to do a little bit more dedicated session for those. However, when looking at the images, these were doing really well even without night mode, so I was getting really good performance out of low light. From the zoom perspective, these are all very nicely rendered with your 0.51, 2, and 5x. These will all be sharp. However, there's a little bit of jumping between lenses when you go from their maxes, so just be cognizant of that if you're, if you're trying to get a video shot with that zoom out effect. So you can zoom up up to 30x zoom as well. I do like that when you are super zoomed in, they do give you a reference point. So Google provides that in the upper right corner, hand corner so you know where you're moving because micro adjustments obviously will make your image go all over the place. But overall, it's kind of potato-y without a lot of great light there. So even with this room, which is it's dimly lit, not so great. And then in the bar, it was even more potato-y when I was trying to read the signs on the wall. Obviously you could see in the certain shapes, but just not really readable due to the low lights. From looking at the lenses, the 2X definitely gives the best image quality. And that's the one that I was most consistently using for my videos due to how good it looked. What the <laughs> play, let's go. Come on. Shot him. He's got to throw it. Shot him. Woo! Walking outside at night with lower light also was very nice. Everything stayed relatively sharp. Colors looked really good as well. The only thing I noticed is when you're using higher settings like 4K on videos, you can't use all of the stabilization settings. We'll get into that a little bit more in the, later in the review, but you are limited in what you can do. So these videos you're seeing here are only just standard stabilized. They're not active stabilized. That's something that we're going to have to test a little bit more in a later video, but there are things that are not quite there yet in the device that you guys need to be wary of. What's up, Raven? To celebrate the Seahawks in Boston. What's up? Hey. <laughs> See, look, I match. I match. I match. I match. Onesies. Onesies are the best comfortable warmth. Sure. If you're like me, you just want to stay on the couch. It's, uh, and then it's like freezing cold, oh. 2 a.m. We're like on a corner, like in downtown Boston, like wind blowing, like, no. like yo. And if another taxi leaves us, like we just gotta start walking. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot this was not that coffee. No couch. Yes. So we're back. That was another heart attack win from the Seahawks. It started off super chill, you know, two touchdowns up, and then they just. We're laying eggs until the very end where we got bailed out by JSN. But can't complain about a win. So we're going to go with that. We are back now and it's like 9.30. And we're at 5%. Basically 5%. Uh, it says that it will last until 10. I will say that it seems to be adjusting because when I first got through the door, it said that it's going to last until 9.45, which is going to be a problem because we're leaving here at 10 to go to this Halloween party. Um, but yeah, 
I mean, I'm, I'm like basically at wit's end with this battery, not wit's end, but basically at the end of the life of this battery before it's going to be useless. Obviously, I can bring a charger with me. I'd prefer not to. Um, if I look at the battery charging stats or battery usage stats, um, camera, photos, Instagram, Lightroom are the most of the stuff, which makes sense based on the usage that we've been doing today. Um, right now, I'm getting six hours and 30 minutes of screen time, which is dope. Like... I think like MKBJ was saying about six hours he was getting. So I'm getting a little bit more. I probably could sneak out another half hour. Uh, technically, according to their stats, I could do another half hour. So that'd be seven hours of screen on time. However, I do need some life out of this to or order an Uber and, you know, survive the night to get an Uber back. So I am going to be using a wireless charger just to see how much I can get within the next half hour. So this is a basis wireless PD wireless charger, 20 watts. The wireless charging on the Pixel can go up to 23 watts. I just couldn't find a wireless charger that could do that. I think Anker has one, but yeah, I'm just gonna do it with what I got. So let's see how quickly this thing can charge uh, in half an hour. Oh, also like I don't have to take off the, um, my pop socket thing or my, my snap grip pro. I can just literally snap it straight on and it's dope. So I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna get ready and I'll be back in my Halloween costume, we can talk more. And we're back. I'm Scarlet Spider for Halloween. So got all this dope shit off of Etsy and some gloves from like, and the football stuff from Amazon. But most of this stuff was relatively cheap. Some of the more expensive things was the mask, but we're not gonna be wearing that out the gate. But let's look how the battery is doing. So the battery is at 25%. So it was able to get like quarter charge basically through half an hour on a 20 watt charger. Not too bad, but the best part and the reason why I'm not having too much like issues with this is because it was pretty good for the bar. I probably could survive anyway, but since this is magnetic and I can take it off and I don't gotta bring an extra charger, I realized that my costume actually has random ass pockets where I can fit this. So, boom, I'm set. So even if this thing dies, I do too much video and photos. I decide to edit at the bar. <laughs> I don't know why I would do that but I have extra power on me. It's dope. So we're ready. The only other thing is I got to figure out where Smika is. I think she's finishing her laundry, but I also want to show you guys this stuff. I want to show you this stuff real quick. It's been a while because I've been Bruno Mars for the past few years, but mm, I get to rock my freaking origin story ones. I know they're not really Scarlet Spiders, but we're rocking these. And I have, mm, you know, I got anklets. I got anklet pockets, so my keys go here. I am prepped for Halloween, I'm ready, even though it's a Sunday and tomorrow's gonna hurt. It's gonna be fun, but let's take some pictures, play around the city and play with the pixel more. <laughs> All right, so we're back and I'm a little bit lazy to mic up, so I'm just gonna talk to you guys straight up and talk probably a little bit closer to the mic so you can hear me. Anyway, we had a ton of fun. It was pretty good. Um, music wasn't as hot as I thought it would be because it thought it'd be more uh, Spanish, but it was just kind of more generic. But anyway, still a good time. Uh, the camera held up pretty well. Um, let's see where I'm at. Right now, I'm at like 5%. We start out 25%. So we're basically at the same place as we started from the night. I didn't need the charge. I was able to get my Uber. So the battery held up pretty well. Um, it seems that the sort of uh, battery saving mode is doing perfectly well and I was still able to get all my shots, do a lot of night shooting, so I, it's understandable how I depleted all of that. Right now it's like 2 o'clock a.m. Um, but yeah, just some quick thoughts on the image quality. Uh, shooting with this was actually relatively seamless in the dark setting that we were in. I was expecting a lot worse performance out of the video because that's usually been a weak point for the pixels. While the photos are really good at night, just night performance for video has been historically not up to par with some of the competitors. What I would say is, relatively speaking, you are getting solid de definition, especially if there's just a little bit of subtle lighting. Things are colored really nicely. There's not too much like slurring of the, the image. There's not too much blending. So there is some discernible characteristics and it's a lot sharper than what I've seen in previous Pixel models. So that's always nice to see. Uh, in terms of photos, let's start with the selfie camera. It's meh in low light, so not the greatest thing to use. I would just kind of flip that camera around and use the back facing cameras just to get the inner image. In terms of normal mode, shooting it was relatively good. I didn't have to go into night mode sometimes and with the lights, you could actually get a decent shot without night sight. 
However, using Night Sight, you were obviously getting a lot better image quality. You're getting a lot better definition and things were rendering pretty quick. It's just a one or two second delay. And it's not as bad as it's been like since I, like in the six, it would take like so many seconds. But now this is a really quick one to two second delay get a good image. I will say shooting this from afar to just take pictures of the landscape is better than portraits with low light. So that's just something to keep in mind. But overall, I was impressed with the photo at 12 megapixel. And that's what we're talking about for this last section is the 12 megapixel shot very good in low light. However, once you start going up to the 50 megapixel, there are some barriers to entry, if you want to say. But basically, it restricted me from playing with exposure, playing with some of the more like settings that would help me lock in my image more. So I was kind of at the mercy of auto mode for some reason. This is probably something that um, Google is going to introduce later. A lot of stuff that, that Google is going to do was you know, like promises of the future. And right now I'm starting to see that because there's limitations on what I could do. Like, so yeah, there's some weird configurations you just have to understand. So for example, like let's say you're at full HD 30, you can use everything. You can use active stabilization, speech enhancement, HDR. However, if you are inactive, you can't use macro lenses. And then, you know, from there, if you decide to go up to 4K, then you can't use active stabilization. You can only use standard. And then if you go up to 60, you can't use HDR. So there's a lot of like caveats of when you can use certain settings. You're really gonna have to get used to that. Hopefully they'll get to that soon, but there are limiting factors when you start playing with the features more. I'm obviously gonna go into that more in a future video, but for now, I'm gonna throw some videos up and pictures up and then talk over in voiceovers tomorrow. And then I'll give you final thoughts, but obviously it's like 2 a.m. I need sleep. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. So day later, we're recovered. And I can finally give you guys some coherent thoughts on what I think about the Pixel 8 Pro and my first like real day pushing it. I was really impressed with the screen on time. Again, a lot of people were saying they were getting like five hours and that was like a really bad point about it. But just using adaptive, I was able to just get away with a lot more than that. Like MKBHD got six and a half. I was getting over seven before that really got into a portion where I was at risk of dying so i was able to get a lot more out of it even on the next day after when i wasn't trying to deliberately murder the battery i was able to get like eight and a half hours screen on time just with casual use so there's definitely a lot to be had here and you know that really high knit screen was good for going outside obviously for the video i didn't do that much because it was mostly nighttime shooting because indoors we we're doing packing and all that sort of stuff but i really liked how well it performed in editing in gaming and all that sort of stuff no lags no worry about the battery and i really like that so overall really impressed from that front cameras are really good too i do want to obviously do something a little bit more dedicated but when using like that 2x especially really liked it the 1x is good as well and it was able to do a lot in low light without any additional modes the biggest finick for me in terms of the camera is selfie cameras all right you're seeing it right now it's pretty decent when you have light but once you start getting to lower light it gets really really potatoey which is like i've seen other cameras do a little bit better and then in terms of just like the promises we went over that in center general it's really confusing of when you can use things and when you can't and like you try to click it you can't there's not a really good explanation in the feature in the features or like the information icons that tell you you can't use that so you're kind of just guessing so there is a little bit of finagle bagel and trying to figure out how to use the camera and in what instances and all that sort of stuff. But hopefully that gets better over time as they release more stuff, but I'll be waiting. And as they start doing that, I'll do more videos on the camera because that's the main thing I got this phone for. But I hope you guys enjoyed following me around for Halloween and getting a sense of how I use this, if this would be something that you guys would do as well and got to understand how long this battery really lasts. So thank you guys for sticking around for the whole long video. I hope to do a little bit more of these because I want to do a little bit more vloggy style when using and doing like reviews for phones and things like that, just so it's more day in the life and that you guys understand how this could be applicable every day. But as always, if you could, please like, comment, subscribe, do all things you normally do on a video that you like and love. And there's more pixel content coming soon. So please stay tuned. And as always, I appreciate you. Happy Halloween.